So what does it mean to test your code and why would you wanna do this? You may have heard of developers talk about things like automated testing, but if you don't know what all the hubbub blue is about, then don't worry, we're gonna break all that down in this video. So far on this channel, we've touched a little bit of code, but before I go any further, I wanted to take some time and talk about everyone's favorite subject, automated testing. You see, tests as we speak of them are simply scripts that run against our features, our code that we've written. It's a way that we can run through scenarios and see if the results produced are what we expected. When one of those results doesn't match up, it raises a flag and tells us that something isn't right. We call them automated tests because they can easily be run by the computer to quickly run through thousands of scenarios or test cases in a matter of moments. Writing tests for our code is a way to ensure a level of quality and catch bugs before they actually reach our users. We want to ship a stable product that is less prone to breaking and we also want to have a high confidence that it's working as expected. Shipping large defects in your application can make it really difficult to retain and attract new users, let alone if you're one of the developers tasked with building and maintaining it. So why is this important? You know, well, broken software isn't just an inconvenience for your users, it's also a fantastic way to lose money. Whether your product is actively generating revenue or not, you'll likely be paying a developer for these fixes to keep your users happy. If you have no testing strategy, it won't give a developer a great insight on what the problem could be. So this means it will take longer to diagnose and remedy a situation, all while you are paying for their time. However, no software is 100% error free. Different combinations of operating systems, languages, and hardware might produce different results, especially when you're talking about web technology as we do so much on this channel. Having these in the test situation can show us where the product might need improving and which browsers it might be having trouble with. As a developer, we wanna know how the features should behave and we wanna know exactly where to fix the issue when a problem arises. As a manager, you wanna catch the defects before they're shipped to our customers for the best experience possible. This is where automated testing can help us. Now we've used the word testing very generically so far, but there are a few different approaches with our applications as we build them. We can do unit testing, integration, or end-to-end -end testing. So unit testing refers to the idea of testing an individual piece of code in isolation. In our world of web development, this would be like testing a component. It's a check to ensure whether something works in its standalone environment. This could easily also be a class or just a utility function. For example, let's say we have a web component that renders a user's name and photo. A unit test with this would be like checking aspects of the component, like ensuring the name renders and the photo appears when we feed in the user data. We don't really care about any page it might live on, we just wanna know if the component is doing the job it was designed to. End-to-end -end testing tries to verify a larger set of functionality of the application as a whole. This is often recreating the interactions a user would have when they're driving through the web or mobile application. An example of an end-to-end -end test would be like clicking the sign-in button, entering their credentials, and then navigating to the user dashboard. Uh, something like that nature where we're testing a whole entire flow. They're a good way to check the workflow of critical feature sets. And then there's integration testing, which is testing two or more units together. It's essentially a more complex unit test, so we often don't note the distinction and simply split our test in terms of unit tests and end-to-end -end test. Think of an integration test as an in-between of a single given unit versus the entire application. So once these scripts are created, developers can leverage them as they develop new features. As they modify the existing code base, they can ensure they're not breaking or altering the functionality of the app in other areas. Say, for example, we wanted to change a component that is being used in three different areas of the app. If each parent component had its own test, we could catch any potential negative side effects from altering that child component. Now, you might be sitting there thinking this sounds like a lot of work, and you'd be 100% correct. It is a lot of work. Tests can definitely be challenging to write and maintain in some circumstances. Even then, it does greatly increase the development time and is often a reason people don't do it. A common thought is, well, I'll just push this out now and fix anything that breaks along the way. While this might get you at the door quicker, it's always gonna come and bite you later. The application will grow large and failures will become more frequent and bugs will become increasingly hard to identify. While you will still want an actual person or a QA team to perform a manual check, it's unrealistic to assume that they would catch hundreds of the low-level operating pieces of something like a unit test could. Now that you have a general idea about testing and what different types of testing there are, Next question is usually, well, how much should I test? What should I test? When should I use unit testing? When should I use end-to-end -end testing? And it's not always a clear-cut answer, as most things are. However, it's usually a good idea to lean heavy on the unit testing at first. This covers your track that pieces of the app are working from a base level, and it's also fairly easy to maintain as the application evolves. End-to-end -end testing, on the other hand, might be met with some mixed reviews. 
Remember, this is the one where we actually simulate the user's behavior and we drive through the application to find those issues. Well, it's usually well perceived by the product team because it simulates the real user and the application work together as it's intended. If you were to ask most developers, they probably have a different opinion though. Now it's really cool to see your application zip around like a ghost is using it, but they are increasingly difficult to maintain. And that's because with an end-to-end -end test, we're querying different areas of the application. Uh, for example, let's say we want to check the flow of a login. Well, we're gonna go ahead and query the login button. We have to click on that button. We have to do different actions. And if anything changes in our app, like maybe the design of the button or maybe the button gets removed for something else, it's gonna break that end-to-end -end test. So you'll find when working with these tests, they tend to be a bit more brittle because everything's so tightly coupled together. In a blog post by Google developer Mike Wacker, he describes this very issue and suggests a distribution of 7, 20, 10 split across your testing suites. So what Mike means here is to keep around 70% of your scripts regulated to unit test, 20% to integration tests, so you can figure another 20% into unit test like things, and then 10% into the end-to-end -end analysis. Now these are just Mike's suggestions, but they are ones I personally endorse. Overall, Mike makes a lot of terrific points and reminds us that there is a point of diminishing returns when we talk about developing these types of scripts. We want to add confidence and reliability, but we also want to deliver updates and focus on our product at a regular pace rather than being consumed and dragged down in test maintenance hell all day. Oftentimes we need to ask ourselves if the juice is worth the squeeze when it comes to an end-to-end -end test. So writing tests isn't always easy. It takes patience, discipline, and a commitment from the team to treat as a priority. But if done correctly, it can be tremendously beneficial to everyone from product to engineering. We'll talk about how these efforts fit into a larger picture of quality assurance and a delivery model as we continue to work on this channel. But for now, that's going to do it all for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch more updates like this, and we'll see you in the next one.